And here's a bit more of a technical layout of uh, the installation. This is the little smart load DB, and that's the one I'm proudest of, because <laughs> that's free heat to my geezers, like I've explained in the other videos. You can uh, see geezer one is on, and the relay will switch it over to two, and we'll get to that just now on the inverter. Let's look at the other stuff. This is the old main DB, so my main is 63 amps. The stove goes straight from that, and that's to the inverter. That's a 50 amp uh, double pole disconnector switch. I just switched over. Great. Right, so that 50 amp double pole tip switch then comes to the same 50 amp double pole tip switch here. That is connected obviously to the surge protection device and uh, connected to the grid feed indicator. So all of this then goes to the inverter, that is to inverter, and that goes to the grid input of the inverter. It also goes to one of the inputs on the changeover switch, obviously that's the ESCOM input. Okay, that's a fan by the way, it's not the inverter, it's just a fan, so you'll hear it here, and you'll feel it nice and hot on this side while it's going. Right, that's, uh, let's, let's get to that later, that's from the inverter, so this is going to the inverter, it's obviously linked to that and down to earth, and linked to that to show that there's power coming from my mains with obviously a 50 amp trip switch on the 8 kVA and in on the double pole um, changeover switch. So the solar feeds it from there and the grid feeds it from there. I'm going to open up my day. This is the day 8 kVA, the bottom there. The smart load just switched. No, the grid is off. Okay, grid just switched off. So it's a load shedding. So that's where the power comes in from the grid. It comes out at the load output, so that's grid input, load output. I've also got a smart load, which is uh, gr uh, it says gen, which means generator input, which in the program is changed to a smart load output. So those two go out, right? This is from inverter, and that is um, a 40 amp trip switch from inverter. That is the load output that I've just showed. And that is now uh, earth neutral bonded and goes to my essentials DB in the kitchen. And I'll show the essentials just now with the earth leakage unit, earth neutral bonded here. That is the other output, which is the smart load output on the gen output. It says gen for generator input, which is changed to an output, goes in. This should be just a normal, normal double pole disconnect chip switch. I had this earth leakage don't need to put a thickage on. I had it, I wanted to put it in. It's extra protection plus it's a, a, a double pole disconnect. That goes to this smart load little DB with an auto change over and a timer. And like I've explained in the other videos, it goes in on this side. It goes straight through. It automatically switches over and goes to the first geezer, then to the second geezer. Um, this one. Uh, like I explained, is just an override. If uh, there wasn't sun and there's a lot of clouds and rain, then the grid will power it. I can do that from my cell phone, and it'll just switch over to grid feed on the in, uh, uh, on the geezer. Sorry. This is just coming from the panels. So this is my one string. That is my other string. It's kind of duplicated in reverse. So the power goes through the. Um, it comes in from the bottom, so that's my PV on the roof, and it's as simple as that. And um, this is my main DB. This one, by the way, is it cuts off my smart load <clears throat> to the geezer between, I think, uh, it only allows it from 10 o'clock to 3 o'clock. <clears throat> and the reason why I only allow that period for my smart load to go to the geezers is I've had my smart load switch on at some stage simply because the battery was full. And I put on a, a stove um, four or five o'clock in the afternoon. So the load went up and when the load goes up, the PV goes up and the PV happened to go to just over 2000 watts. And the smart load went on and my first geezer, which is 3000 watts switched on. I didn't want that scenario. So I just cut off that scenario with the timer. It's just safer. I just don't want to use my battery. In that scenario where your load is higher than your PV, uh, geezer 3000 watt plus what's happening in the house and the stove and everything 
was about 5,000 watts and I was only getting two and a half year battery needed to supplement so the battery was going down and down and down all the time so I didn't want that scenario late afternoon before three there should be no issues uh, just by the way um, the battery is the one that's pushing up the PV in the morning it goes to max whatever PV there is available the battery will pull that uh, and it'll go up to I've set it now to a um, bit lower let's go and have a look uh, gen, no, yeah, gen port is 2000 watts and my cutoff or uh, start start up uh, smart load switches on at 90% battery switches off at 85 I made it a bit closer I don't want to use my battery too much for supplement uh, that's if, if if it is on the geezers on and suddenly someone switches on a stove etc then eventually the output the uh, load is going to be so much more than the solar and then it's going to start supplementing it by the battery and I don't want it to drop below 85. Just another tip, um, you'll see that when, once you go to 100% your battery, now this is obviously a setting probably but it's, it seems like a default setting, once your battery goes to 100% this specific Volta battery with the communication of a BMS to this inverter, if it goes to 100% uh, and you use more load than the PV, it'll start using the battery and the battery will drop down to let's say 95%. It won't go up flat out to 100% again. It'll trickle charge. So in the afternoon, late afternoon, you're only going to get 95%, 94%, 93% if you need to supplement your solar because the solar is getting less and less in the afternoon. And the battery is going to start the evening at 93% or something like that, not 100%. It doesn't go into a full charge mode once it's reached 100%. It needs to drop down significantly, looks like. I don't know where the limit is. Might be 90% before it'll kick in and fully charge again at, at the maximum solar that is available. So uh, you've got to look at that, think about that. For the guys who are so sensitive about their batteries not being 100%, that's actually then a good thing for them. Uh, it normally goes to 100, obviously balances the cells out, which is great, and then starts dropping the moment you use more load than PV. Uh, then the battery will go down, 93, 95, somewhere there. I've had it on 91 and it still went to trickle charts, meaning this surely is a lot more solar, but it's only showing minus 0 0.01 in other words 10 watts or 20 watts I mean it's not really charging it's just kind of trickle charging so just keep that in mind as well right then finally the essentials DB everything is on the essentials except that stove earth leakage which has got a neutral bond at the output of the inverter uh, and there's just all my plugs and that's as simple as that like that's my one string of four panels. I've got another string of four panels. And I'm getting 3.5. Battery obviously tries to do the most it can. One geezer, two kilowatt geezer, obviously part of the load. And I'm only, only getting 3.5 and it's a really nice hot summer day. Summer, Cape Town, near Cape Town. It should be 4.4, .4, closer to that. I think my panels is a bit dirty. I did clean them about a month and a half ago. They probably need another clean cleaning uh, to get them above four. I've, I've had it spike at 4.9 actually. 4.4 .4 is my max. All right, that is the Volta battery stage two, 7.68 kilowatt hours, 160 amp, 160 amp disconnect and fuses, blade fuses trunking where AC and DC is separated. AC is on the left, DC is on the right. AC goes through the bottom and up there and the DC, no sorry, AC on the right because that goes into the AC DV. DC on the bottom, down to the battery, up to the um, solar PV and they're separated. That's the important part. Well, I hope I could help someone uh, with the installation and, and some ideas on how to do it a bit better. Uh, here we go again. <laughs> All the best.